Hello, Tim Morris from Cincinnati State, and today let's talk about aircraft accumulators. An accumulator is a device that stores hydraulic power. It stores hydraulic fluid, usually under pressure, and it stores it for high use conditions. There's other things we can do with accumulators. We can use it as a shock absorber to dampen vibrations. We can also use it as an emergency source of power. There's a couple of different types of accumulators that we use in aircraft and the first one is called a spherical accumulator. Now here's a spherical accumulator. Looks like a big round ball and it's got a charge uh, valve up on top. We're going to put nitrogen in this accumulator and then in the bottom we've got a port where hydraulic fluid can come up inside this and be stored under pressure uh, for when we need it other times. Uh, the times that we need this thing is maybe in an emergency where a hydraulic pump might quit or it's also some time where we have a lot of hydraulic uh, being used, a lot of hydraulic oil being used at the time. Um, this is a piston type accumulator and it does the same thing. It's got uh, nitrogen on one end, it's got a piston in it and it, it uh, uh, hydraulic fluid comes in and is stored under pressure. Here's a diaphragm accumulator. Uh, this is back to the, the first one that we were looking at. In this picture, um, on the left, uh, well, let me, let me, on the left, we have nitrogen in the bottom of it. And this valve here on the very bottom, this is how we put nitrogen in. So we hook up a hose when the airplane's on the ground, we pump this full of nitrogen, and we put something like, you know, maybe 1200 psi of nitrogen, sometimes more in there and the nitrogen will be stored under pressure. From the top a hydraulic line is connected to the hydraulic system. Hydraulic fluid comes in here. Now as the pump pumps the hydraulic fluid up to pressure um, the, the amount of hydraulic fluid uh, that comes in here is determined by how much pressure there is and this nitrogen is compressible. If you remember hydraulic fluid, pa uh, we talked about Pascal's law and we talked about uh, compressibility. Hydraulic fluid is not compressible, but nitrogen is. And so it's like we've got this thing down here like a basketball, then we've got this this fluid uh, which comes in, and this allows us to store hydraulic fluid under pressure. Uh, this picture on the right is when the airplane is shut off, this, this uh, diaphragm will flex and when the airplane's turned off, it will push all the way up. It will push the fluid out uh, when the hydraulic system is shut down. So this is made of two steel hemispheres uh, fastened together and uh, with a folded neoprene diaphragm between these two halves. That's how this, how this diaphragm type accumulator works. So now let's talk about some other, uh, some other things about it. This is a bladder, a couple different types of bladder. Uh, in this thing. Now this is a um, this is a round bladder which is secured at the top. It's a little bit different than what we were looking at in the other picture but it gives you an idea. The bladder is just this rubber, this big very thick rubber membrane and it has uh, on the inside would be the uh, nitrogen and on the outside what's pushing against this side will be hydraulic fluid. So this is a cartridge type accumulator that's stored that's in an airplane and this is in the wheel well of an airplane. You'll notice that there's a pressure gauge here and the pressure gauge comes up here there's a fill valve but it also the pressure gauge is reading the pressure of the nitrogen that is in this uh, accumulator. So when it needs to be serviced uh, the airplane's on the ground we'll roll up a service cart and we'll hook a hose to a nitrogen tank and we'll charge this uh, with something like um, oh, 1,000 to 2,000 pounds. There's a little chart here on the side that tells us, uh, based on the temperature outside, uh, how to charge it, what, what the amount of nitrogen that's supposed to be in this system. We always check these things with the hydraulics shut off and um, so we can read just what the actual nitrogen is. If we have hydraulics turned on, we'll actually read the hydraulic pressure that the pump is putting out and we'll show you what that we'll show you why here in a minute this is the inside of this and you'll see on this one side we have nitrogen and then there's a piston and on the other side comes in the hydraulic fluid 
So we charge this with something like a thousand psi when the airplane fires up, the hydraulics come on. Um, it will uh, we'll have something like three thousand psi on on this side from the hydraulic pump, and it will push this this piston, and this nitrogen will start to compress. Once it gets to where we've compressed this up to where we have three thousand pounds here, this will fill with hydraulic fluid until it, that's compressed, and we will equalize. Well, 3,000 pounds coming in from the pump, and this thing will be squeezed until we have 3,000 here and 3,000 here. We'll, we will seek equilibrium. And we're going to talk about how that works here in just a minute. Here's another uh, picture of an accumulator, and we're looking. This is for the rudder system on a corporate jet, and we've got the reservoir. They're showing us in here the standby accumulator. This is number two is the accumulator. And number one, this is the, where the reservoir is, hydraulic reservoir. And then we got some other components in here. But this kind of shows you uh, another illustration of an accumulator. Now, the way we fill these accumulators is we'll hook a hose and a cart. We'll have a, a tank, a nitrogen tank, and we'll take that out to the airplane, and we will connect to one of these types of valves. There's three different types of valves um, that we're going to look at. And these are high, considered high-pressure strut valves. Really, anything over about 1,500 psi is considered high-pressure. I always think high-pressure as being 3,000 and above. We have a 5,000 psi valve here. These things just vary by part number. Um, we'll see that, that this 1,500 psi valve is very different from the others. In fact, let's look at another picture here. Um, these are three types, A and 8, 12. And 862.87-1 and MS28889-1. Easy for me to say. I don't remember these numbers. They're on the slide, right? So the the valve on the left is like a valve on your car. You hook this up and you charge it with nitrogen, just like you you put air in your tire. Um, and it works just like that. There's a little plunger on the inside called a valve core, and it fills. Now these other two have a swivel nut. So this swivel nut, you put your wrench on it and you, you hook your hose up to this, turn on your nitrogen to charge it, whatever your pressure is. If it's 2,000 PSI or 1,200 PSI, you're going to hook that up and dial that in. You're going to loosen this swivel nut and that will let the nitrogen go into, um, into the accumulator, let it flow through the valve. When you get it charged, you will snug this swivel knot up, you're tightening it up, just gently you, uh, to get uh, an adequate torque. You don't want to over torque it, but um, uh, that will lock this thing closed. Same thing on this. So, so the 5,000 PSI and the 3,000 PSI style have a swivel nut, which you open and charge it, and then you close it. This is a picture of the ANA-12. This is the real simple one. You hook up the hose, and you just charge it. Um, and let me see, it. Uh, high pressure valve course, we'll see a embossed H on the end of the valve stem. And this takes a special valve stem um, that's in here, but this H means that this is going to be a high pressure valve stem. It's usually in the 3000 and 5000 PSI systems. This is the other style, the 6287-1, a 38,000 PSI. It has the swivel nut, and it will have the H on the valve stem.